Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install our WordPress website. And um, in installing it, it's going to include a few steps. Uh, not just installing it, we're going to create our subdomain to host our WordPress website for our Inside Out project. And we are going to install the uh, a backup plugin to make sure that we are able to move forward um, and always have our latest work to fall back on. Um, and we uh, will begin right now. So we're going to go to Agavis Hosting, log in. And when we log in, um, the first thing we need to do is go create a subdomain for our website to install WordPress on. Um, currently, I do not have um, <clears throat> the subdomain, and I would imagine most of you do not. Uh, some might, uh, because we did play with this at one point. Um, but we're going to go ahead and act like you don't, and we're going to go over here to we're going to go over here to create a subdomain. And in here, we're going to put inside dash out dash WP for WordPress. And what we need to do on this right side is select our, our primary domain, the domain that we're hosting. Um, now that we have that and create domain, uh, subdomain is selected, we can go ahead and click add a host. So what that did for us is that actually created a subdomain for us, uh, just like our HTML one. And um, we are now able to uh, install a website on there or put our files on there or whatever we wanted to do. We'll go ahead and take a look uh, at our file manager. And there is our website. And if we look at it online, if we right click on it and go view online. We'll see, of course, the marketing advertisement page that is installed by default with all the websites. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and close that page out. Now, one of the nice things with our hosting is we have an installer, um, application installer. And if we go to installer, applications, installer, and click on it, what we'll find there is a variety of very popular blogs and shopping carts and things of that nature and um, of course the one that we would like to have is the WordPress um, and if you look all the way to the right here and you have WordPress highlighted uh, if we click install it will take us to an installer um, we leave the uh, the application to install at WordPress 4.8.2 it's always the latest it could be different it could be higher um, after making this video and then we need to tell it what domain we want it to be installed on and we just created our inside out WP inside out project well that would be your your uh, domain name and that's the one we want to select we'll go ahead and get rid of this what this is is um, it's asking us if if we want it to create a directory in our subdomain to install WordPress and and we don't um, so we want it at the root of the site, so when we actually go to this address, it takes us right to our WordPress website. We're going to um, make our admin name student, and our password, of course, is going to be RACPASS, uh, R-A-C-C-P-A-S-S, -S, all lowercase, no spaces, and we have to confirm it as well. Now, of course, it's going to tell us that our password is not worth crap, and we're used to that. Um, that's fine. The next thing we want is this is the email address that the website will use with any correspondence or any kind of uh, update information or anything of that nature. So we want to leave, uh, we want to set that to an email address that we regularly go to. Um, for our web blog title, that ends up being the title at the top of the page. You can see kind of all blurry here, but there's top parts. That's the title. And um, what we want our title to be is inside out dash your first and last name. <clears throat> Data, database prefix, we'll discuss that later. Um, but we'll go ahead and just let it uh, set the WP. And we'll also let it automatically create uh, select a selected database. 
at this point it's just going to um, we're just going to take a select a theme which we'll be changing later but for now we're just going to select this one theme and um, we're going to go ahead and click install WordPress depending on web traffic and what time of day it is and how busy uh, the servers are this could take anywhere from a couple seconds to a couple minutes and um, you want to just give it enough time to do it to install and um, if you've never seen a WordPress installation it's pretty impressive what can be done inside a measurement of seconds even minutes um, in all honesty the development time that it would take to create recreate WordPress uh, a team of 10 people probably couldn't do it in a year so our WordPress site has been created um, at this point if I right click on this and I, I click um, open link a new tab it will take me to what we call the front end of our website and we can see that there is our website is created um, and then if I wanted to, yeah, um, to go to to administer the website um, what you do is uh, you actually just can come out here and you can put slash WP dash admin and we're just telling it that we want to go to the admin part of the website which we also refer to as the back end of the website in the admin section is where we can do pretty much anything we want um, to the site. So we're going to log in with our student and our rack pass. And we're going to log into the site. <clears throat> now there's a whole lot to learn back here. But what we are going to do is position ourselves before we start learning to not uh, regret any actions or have to be uh, worrisome as we move forward. And what I mean by that is... Um, in development one of your greatest activities you can do is back up your website so when you do something to it if it's not good um, you can restore it to the last time you backed it up and so to do that we'll go over all these neat and cool things at, at a point um, if you did name your site incorrectly you can go into settings in general by the way um, and that's where you can actually rename it and um, while we're in here, let's go ahead and put our tagline in. Continuously falling forward into the light. Yes, entertain me. I must be there, be a part of the grade. Um, additionally, let's go ahead and set ourselves to UTC minus five because that is our time. And then we're gonna come down here and we're going to save changes. So, Back to backing up the website. <clears throat> WordPress is awesome. I'm going to click on plugins and installed plugins. Uh, one of the things that makes WordPress so awesome is the fact that there's such a variety of available plugins out there. For um, most, the majority of them are free, but you can buy a pay for a better version. And a lot of times, uh, in most cases, especially for smaller businesses and things like that it's not even that necessary to pay for better versions because what they offer in the free version is usually adequate in, in quite a bit um, so we'll see that because what we're going after at this point <clears throat> is a um, a backup plugin we want to be able to back our site up as soon as we can as soon as after we install it we want <clears throat> we want to go ahead and do a backup so that we capture um all the installation configurations things like that um and we click on new we could search plugins for hours um it's absolutely crazy what you can get in here but uh again we're going to get to the point and position our site that we can start working in it and learn as we work um so with that said we're going to you go up here in this search plugins box and we're going to type in up draft and one of the results we get back is the updraft plus wordpress backup plugin um usually when you're looking for plugins there's uh 
four key pieces of information that are really relevant to your decision as to whether you want to put them on your site or not. And of course, the first one is the rating. Um, and, uh, you know, a rating based on seven people or one person obviously isn't much of a rating, but a rating based, based on uh, 2,671 people, excellent rating. Um, the other thing we want to pay attention to is how many active installs. Uh, 40 does not give you a, a high level of comfort as where, um, uh, you know, 600,000 is, is pretty sweet. That's definitely some people working on it. 3,000, okay, um, maybe worth looking at. Over a million, heck yeah, take it. Um, because if there was something wrong with that, with this plugin, you know that you would hear chatter about it with over a million installs. The other thing you want to check out is the last updated. Um, as you can see down here, two years ago is not a very comforting seven years ago. Uh, good Lord, um, they, should, they should wipe that off. Um, the, the problem with plugins, the only problem that you can run into with plugins is people will have great intentions and they'll start a plugin, it'll be a great plugin, and they'll get it going and people start installing it and then they will abandon it and they won't keep it up to date. And it's really important to keep your plugins up to date because of security reasons. And um, as the platform changes and evolves, WordPress itself, the core code um, changes and evolves. You want your plugins to um, ride right along with that and, and <clears throat> take advantage of it and, and uh, um, you know, play nice with those changes. So um, that's nice to see four days ago. Um, they're staying on top of their plugin. Additionally, uh, WordPress comes out with an update, probably bi-weekly for sure, um, where their security patches, fixes, little bug fixes, things like that, they're constantly working on this platform. And um, it's always nice to see if your plugin is compatible with the current version that you're using of WordPress, and we're using the newest version. All right, so... Um, to get this plugin, it's as simple as saying install now. What it's doing is it's uh, our server is reaching out to a uh, WordPress server and it's pulling a copy of this plugin, the files, um, and it's actually pulling it to our server and in a compressed fashion. And when it gets everything down to our server, what will happen is it'll uh, decompress it and um, it'll place it into specific location in our file system and then um, what it'll do is um, uh, let the database know it'll put a line in the database saying hey I'm here I'm good to go and I can be activated what's really cool with plugins is we can activate and deactivate them so if we turn this on and it did not play nice with our website all we'd have to do is turn it off in most cases so we're gonna go ahead and activate it <clears throat> and it is now activated. So where this plugin resides in our menu over here is actually under settings. And if we go to settings and we go to updraft plus backups, we wanna change one setting in here. Um, and again, we'll go over all this stuff uh, as we move along. Um, but what we wanna do is it allows us to say how many, how many um, backups would we like it to retain of the files and of the database because we're in development mode we're developing we want to put that thing up around 10 normally we we don't necessarily need to have it around 10 if you have the space and uh, it doesn't cause issues uh, it, it doesn't hurt uh, what that means is after we've accumulated 10 backups the um, the oldest one will be deleted when the 11th one is taken. So we're gonna go ahead and say save changes. And it saved the changes. And now we're gonna come over here to existing backups. We don't have any in there. Um, so what, we can, what we're gonna do now is go over to current status. And we're gonna say backup now. And when we do that, uh, we're telling it include the database, any files. We already told it to do that, but it gives us the option to opt out of doing that. 
um, because sometimes you might not necessarily want to take it back up to the files. You just want the database because you know all the changes that happened since the last backup were on my database. Um, and we're going to click backup now. So right now, um, there we go, it kicked in. It's starting to back up the site and it's giving us a progress report on what it's doing. And um, our site is pretty, pretty small at this point. So it looks like it actually completed and we can see that it did complete. And here's our backup. It breaks the backup in the database, plugins, themes, uploads, others. And we'll learn about these things as we move forward. Um, but we could come in and we could restore and what it would do is take our site back actually to right where it is at this moment <clears throat> all right so now that we have our our site installed and our backup in um there's one other thing we want to do which is we will go back to the server agabus hosting to our web hosting and um the last thing that we want to do for this lesson is we want to go to files file manager and we want to find that WP inside out. And we want to make sure that um, we are site protecting it. And so what we do is we right click on it and we go to password protect and add. And we do the student and rack pass. And this one's already protected, so that's why I got that. But you will get a little message saying um, that you success, successfully protected your website. So that concludes this lesson. Um, again, just a brief overview. All we did was go in and install our WordPress. Um, now as you play around with it, you'll see up here in the left corner, uh, you can go to visit site, and that'll take you to what we call the front end of the site. And we could go up here and go to dashboard, which will take us to the back end of the site.